So we are here at a farm today that melts about a thousand cows. They only have nine cows for us today that have slight issues and this is the worst of the lot. So let's see exactly what's wrong with it. So as I said in the intro, this is a very large farm for the UK and they have a very low percentage of lame cows. This little jersey however has gone lame and because of that she's in pain. So it's our job today to make sure we can get her as pain free and comfortable as possible or as close as we possibly can. Just from seeing her walking I can tell that she's got problems on both of her back feet but we don't know exactly how serious it is. It turns out the one in the back right foot is much more serious than it first appears. But anyway, we're starting with this left foot and first up, we're trying to get the balance back and make sure the weight is distributed evenly between both of the claws before we tackle the real problem lurking below that hoof horn. As I trim this back foot, it gives a great visual representation of the differences between pigmentation of the hoof horn and bruising of the sole. The darker, more purpley areas are pigmented hoof horn and the reddish areas are where bruising is occurring and that is the problem. Call this the typical sole ulcer site because typically that's where we find a sole ulcer. Despite my knives being incredibly sharp, trimming away hoof horn like this takes as much force as I have in me, but I still need to control it as well as I can. The only thing I could liken it to is trimming away lumps from a big block of wood. It's much harder than peeling away any potatoes or any vegetable you can think of. And just as I thought, there's a sole ulcer right there. By taking away this heel, it creates a big height difference, like a natural block, if you like, and takes the weight away from that sole ulcer site and gives her pain relief and the sole ulcer a chance to heal. You could think that you're finished right now, but actually, like if you peel that back, it's all detached in there, you see? So we're going to carefully put our knife in there. Okay, so that's looking better. Now to tidy this up, Wolfie we'll Bond a block on here and finish off trimming that also.
And by the way, while Craig's sticking that block on, I'll tell you about what's happening with merch. We are relaunching merch on the 5th of June, that Saturday, the 5th of June at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time in the States, which is about 8 p.m. UK time. So set your alarm clocks for Saturday, the 5th of June, 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Because last time we sold out in just under four hours. We do have a lot more stuff this time, and we have some new lines, which are awesome. I'll show you them in the next video. You can get his hat though, look. Didn't he look good? And with that block in place and all of that excess horn trimmed away, she is going to be as comfortable as possible. Let's see what's happening with her other foot. This one don't look too good either. Yup. Look at that big flappy bit. Look at that. So as we start trimming this back right foot, it's not going to look like anything major is wrong with it. But trust me, this progresses rather rapidly. So these cows are housed outside almost 365 days of the year. They only come inside when they're due to calve and that's why her feet are incredibly hard and I'm finding it slightly difficult to cut through. Now she's actually got a bit of an infection in there. We'll open it up a wee bit more in a second. But right now we're going to bovi bond a block on there. So if you look towards the top right hand side of the screen, you'll notice a scraggy little bit of horn sticking out from her hairline. That is all detached and needs to come away. Things are about to get a little bit bloody folks. But stick around for the end of the video and you'll see that maybe all is not quite as bad as it seems. There's a really sharp bit of horn right there sticking into her foot. You see this isn't attached, look. See it moving? So I'm not cutting live tissue, it's just underneath the detached horn there is blood. Can you guys see that in there, look. None of this is attached. So we need to take away this part that's not attached. It may look like there's a substantial amount of blood, but really there's only about a spoonful. And in a second or two, I'll show you just how small the open part really is. So if you look now, she's bleeding from this tiny little spot here and a tiny little spot there. And that's it. The rest of this was completely unattached. And yes, it looks like a mess, but it all needs to come off if she's ever going to heal properly. So just as Craig started to bandage this up with magical paste, we've decided to put another block on top of it because we feel that it's still going to touch the ground. And it touching the ground in itself, it's going to cause our pain and that means it won't heal properly. So we're just going to go ahead and bovie bond on another block and then see what she's walking like. And as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Let's see how well she's walking. Now I'm not gonna lie, in my humble opinion, 
She's not walking much better at all. And that's understandable. Look what we've been doing to her fruit. We've had her legs up in the air, playing about with something that's already sore. But what I am gonna say is, she is definitely gonna be feeling much better within about an hour or so. And when we're back here in two weeks time, she will be much better than she is right now. And that is what's key. Ongoing and long-term comfort for her. Guys, this has been the Hoof GP and you have been awesome. Thanks very much. And remember, the merch goes live June 5th, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. UK time. Set your alarms.